My name is Robel Ambasawendim and I'm from Ethiopia and today I'm here to talk to you about Ethiopian schools and how they give you education. How many classes do you have per day and when do you start and when do you finish school? Uh, we have eight classes per day and we, we basically start at eight and finish at three. Nice, yeah. okay. What is the grade scale? What is the lowest and the highest grade you can get? Theoretically, the lowest grade you can get is a zero. Uh, and the highest grade you can get is a uh, hundred. A hundred. But uh, to get a hundred uh, from it, you need you need to work a lot, and you need to be a teacher's favorite, basically. How many subjects do you study, and what are the subjects that you study? We study thirteen subjects, and we don't get to choose the subjects we learn. The first one are like the sciences. Number one is physics, chemistry, biology, uh, then maths. And we don't, we don't really know what maths we're learning. They just like say maths and we, we know what it is. And then English composition, English grammar, SAT, English literature. So it, like it, it alternates with composition. Physical education and health, central language. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay, what extracurricular activities do you have? In my country, if um, you're studying back and like doing extracurricular activities, it's either going to be foreign languages, uh, like French and Spanish and uh, Arabic, or and like uh, the others are you just gonna you're going to study for the national exams that are given by the government. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So would they be connected to the school those extracurricular, or you go on your own? Yeah, you go on your own. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's kind of like private lessons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. What does your lunch consist of? Do you have a cafeteria? Uh, we, we do have cafeterias, but like, I lived in a day school. So students are required to or like recommended to have their own lunch. But if you forget to bring your own lunch or like want to pay, you could just go to the cafeteria and buy uh, food. And the food mainly consists of like, Ethiopian food. Uh, that's about it. And some sandwiches. Is it good food? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. Like, what would a typical meal consist of? A typical meal, like, first of all, I need to talk about, like, the size. It, it's a tray full of food. It would consist of a chicken stew, meat stew, a minced meat, a bunch of vegetables, a tomato salad. Then there's this type of bean meat and rice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Sounds very good. Very delicious. Yeah. I'd like to try that without the meat, but it sounds really good. Yeah. Okay, so... Do you have a physical grade book where they put your grades in and then hand that back to you or how does that yes. work? Like they're called report cards mm -hmm. and like they're actually really good quality and they give ranks to the students based on the average of the student. So how would that work? They have all of the 13 subjects, like they fill in your grades, then they have something that says average and like your total points out of 2000 then like your grade, your rank out mm -hmm. of like 40, 30 students in class. Oh, so they put you in a in a, a certain place like yeah. a, I see. Yeah, who has the higher average in class. I see, yeah. I see, I see, I see. And after that, like uh, we have this award ceremonies. So for example, we're 11th graders, right? So there's 11A, 11B, 11C, and like other letters based on like students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every single time, like every student from top five student from each class is chosen and given an award. Like they compare them uh, with like A to B and C to D. Then they give uh, whoever have a better average wins a nice. award. Have you ever been in like those top places? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. My uh, multiple times actually. Nice. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Good job. Do you have uniforms? Yes, we do. That's the main part of education in Ethiopia, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how does your uniform look like? Oh, it's blue-black. We're not allowed to wear skinny pants, so we have baggy clothes and a white uh, shirt and a necktie. <laughs> nice, okay. Yeah. Do you like wearing a uniform? No. No, right? Yeah, it's horrible. So how many years is the primary education? I mean, here it's from kindergarten to 12th grade. How does that work in your country? Here, like, students are going to choose what they are going to major in. Not even until college, not even in college. They're not going to know what they're going to do. But in my country, you dedicate yourself since 10th grade. You choose either you're going to science or social. 
students are given all the science biology physics chemistry and like everybody's supposed to do them no you're not allowed to choose which one you're going to do until like 10th grader uh, then you're able to choose which one you're going to do so if you choose social you're not going to take physics or biology or chemistry you're just going to take math interesting okay tell me a little bit more about that what happens after that when you choose your subject when you devote yourself to let's, let's say social sciences what happens after that so when you choose social sciences the government gives you education that are related to economics politics civics and other related stuff so that people are going to go to accounting like majors uh, political majors and economic majors people take those classes and mm -hmm. it's a requirement and they drop every other classes like physics and biology then in 12th grade you, you take a test and if you don't get above 500 out of 700 you even though you're dedicated yourself for science like the government might put you in a social or economic like the majors if you don't do well enough it is the government that chooses what school you go to it's not you yeah and not only that like the government gives you which region you're going to you're not going to be able to choose whichever your region you want to go to the government gives you or whichever university you're going to go to so if you want to go to one of the best schools in your country but you're not from that region you don't have any chance of going there the only chance you have is getting High, higher scores than anybody else and that that will give you a more likely chance to go into that college but still won't guarantee you going into the college you want even though you have a score higher than everyone interesting okay okay how much time would a typical class last it's it's 45 minutes each 45 minutes and then you have 10 minute breaks uh, no we don't the teacher just comes uh, within five minutes and students don't typically move from classes to class uh, teachers come into the class with their uh, lesson plans. very interesting and how many people is your class for example how many classmates do you have back in Ethiopia so from last year uh, at 30 students in one class in grade 9 uh, I was in 9b and 9b consisted of 32 students okay. yeah and other classes have 40 to 30 students a lot of students yeah okay do you have a lot of homework yes we do yeah there are something called uh, worksheets and uh, they're basically given to us uh, every single day even though uh, other, we don't have we don't have a specific class in that in that day we're just given a homework and we're supposed to complete it uh, before like the class so even though you haven't had the class they still give you homework yes wow okay yeah. interesting what do you think of that I don't think it's really nice because like usually you have to like go on your own pace uh, students don't really like and appreciate because you're gonna miss some stuff and all I understand so you mentioned that national exam in 12th grade how important is that exam it's basically like how you're gonna end up how your life is gonna be because if you don't do good in that test and if you don't really show your skills even though you have them some people are really good like they're really smart but their nerves get into it and like they, they spend their whole life studying for that test and like if you end up screwing that up you, you're never going to get whichever major you want to go to so like the government chooses what career they want you to go to so if they're missing like a politicians they put you in a political science or if they're missing like scientists they put you in science but mostly if you major in science back home you end up being a teacher not, not nothing more Wow, yeah, interesting. So you don't go to do experiments or something more. Yeah, even if you don't want to be a teacher, that's yeah, that's basically if you want to live, you do that because there are no other jobs that you can work on. I see. Yeah. Wow. How close would you get with teachers? Do you get to know them well? Yeah, like I would say yes because I mean there are some teachers that you don't get close to. There are teachers that you don't that don't really want to you know, engage with students. But most teachers are like friendly and all. There are some disputes between student and teacher, but that's everywhere, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After you finished school in, how, when did you say you finished school? Uh, we finished school in June. Uh, no, no, I mean in the day. Oh, the day. we uh, at, uh, at three. Three. Yeah. Okay. So after you finish school at three o'clock, mm -hmm. what happens? What would a typical day after school of a student look uh, like? It depends based on what kind of school you're in, uh, from the school I've been in. There are national exams in 8th grade, 10th grade and 12th grade. 
So seventh grader, which is rising to an eighth grade, you have to have uh, after school programs and Saturday classes. So uh, after school, you, you have like an ex extra two hours to work on your uh, national exam preparations. Eighth grade, you do the same thing. Ninth grade, you only have summer classes. Tenth grade, you have Saturday and after school program. Eleventh grade, you have summer classes. Twelfth mm -hmm. uh, grade, you have uh, after school and uh, Saturday classes. You go out of school around, what should I say? Yeah, 6.30. 6.30. Uh, yeah, and you go back home by 7. Then you do whatever you want. You usually people play soccer and like spend time together. Okay. Okay, nice. And then you do your homework, I guess. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. So all of those preparations for the test and everything, they happen within the school? Mm -hmm. Extra work are given to us. And uh, there are something called the model exams. Uh, for SAT, there is uh, PSAT, right? Exam that prepares you and tells you how well we're going mm -hmm. to do. Yes. Okay, so you mentioned those Saturday classes and summer classes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay, Saturday classes, uh, you basically wake up early, it, it, it's like a normal day, so you go to school by 8, and, uh, you cannot go any later, otherwise like uh, you get punishments. Uh, after 8, you go, to, uh, you go to your first class for about 2 hours, then you have 30 minutes break, then you go to another class for about 3 hours again, then you go back home. I see, and how often would that happen? Uh, every two years. Every two uh, years. After seventh grade. After seventh grade? Yeah. Every other year, I mean. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. So if you have it seventh grade, then you have it ninth and eleventh grade as mm -hmm. well. And this is every Saturday. Yeah. I see. And okay. then there's after school too. After school programs are basically there are day students. We wait for them to leave, which takes about an hour. Then until then, we just line up, eat some snacks and all. Then we go to our classes. Then teacher comes in. You spend uh, about two hours discussing and uh, learning new materials for the class and for the national exams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Very nice. And what about the summer classes? How often does that happen? What does it? What does it? What is it like? Summer classes. Summer classes. It's until one. It's until one. You go. You go to school at eight. You stay until one. Uh, you still wear uniforms. We take a lot of stuff for our national exams. There are a lot of items included in our exams. So we start learning items before uh, the school year starts. Okay. So we learn a semester long work in just like one month, frame of one month. Then we uh, continue working on the other parts. So that we have about like two months to three months to uh, work on our model exams and all. I understand. So is this all the summer when you finish school, does it start right away? Yeah. 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 And it's until the first day of school? Uh, no, it doesn't start right away, sorry. It starts two weeks later. They want to give us some break. And the, your summer grade is included with your first quarter grade, first semester grade. Uh-huh. Yeah. I understand. Okay. What do you think about the education in your country overall? The education, it's good. But the way it's delivered, and after all that work, you know a lot from the education you get because you spend hours and hours working on the items that you have, and uh, the books are really good, and the teachers are really good. But the only problem with that is that once you go to college, you don't know what major you're doing. So all the all the things you've done, all those hours you've spent, might be for nothing. Like you might be end up doing a major that you don't even know nothing about. So that not only affects you, but affects the society too. I see. Yeah. So you don't think it's a good way of helping the society? Yeah. I see. I or see. yourself, for that matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So c comparing it to the education here, what, what would you prefer? Would you rather the education here? Yeah, I, I much rather the education here. And the other problem with our education is, for example, math. Like when you come here, Maths is given in different levels, but us, we don't know what maths we're doing. They just give us everything combined. So calculus with geometry and all that stuff. And people are, if you tell them to do something, it gets them confused. But they still do it, but it gets them confused. If you tell them to name what kind of maths they're doing, people probably don't know it. 
they just know how to do it. Yes. Yeah. I understand. The, that's the same in my country. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks very much. That was it. Thank you for listening and subscribe. <laughs> Това беше и видеото за образованието в Етиопия. Сега знаете какво е. Сега може би може да оцените на нашето образование една идея повече, защото не си навярвам. Поне в моето училище, в това училище, в което аз съм учил, в сравнение с нещата, които чух от тези хора, мисля, че нашето образование е повече от прекрасно наистина. Не казвам, че е идеално, не казвам, че е най-доброто, но определено има места в света, където има много по-строги изисквания. Надявам се това видео да ви е било интересно. Последното от тази поредица, второто и последното от тази поредица. Ще продължавам за в бъдеще да правя такива видео, ако имам възможност. Така че ако ви е харесало, може да оставите един лайк, както Рубел ви каза. Може да се абонирате и това е. Чао!